Hello fellow psychonauts. Today I want to talk about the most mind-blowing thing about psychedelics in my opinion. Now I know that there's a lot of benefits of psychedelics like its ability to heal trauma, the way it challenges our culture, amazing nature bonding and life enriching effect from these substances. Yes, these psychedelics have benefits, but they also have mind-blowing philosophical implications. I could be here forever talking about how many there are. I could make a video for hours talking about the implications of psychedelics, but today I wanted to talk about what I think is the most mind-blowing. <laughs> if you could mathematically quantify the amount of which something could blow your mind, the most earth-shattering thing. But when people come up to me and say, hey Dolo, what is the most mind-blowing thing about psychedelics? No one's ever actually asked me that. Um, people sometimes ask me, why, do you, why are you such a heavy advocate of psychedelics? Because I think it's clear to most folks that there is something within the philosophical implications of the psychedelic experience that seems to move people so. Well, here it is. It has to do with the Sorites Paradox. Sorites in ancient Greek, meaning heap. So here we have our heap, right? But what happens if we take away a grain of sand? Well, it's still a heap. But then we take away another grain of sand. Still a heap. But then we take another and another until we get this. Is this a heap? What about this? Or this? If we remove a grain until only one is left, is this still a heap? At what point do we no longer consider it a heap? Or let us imagine an experiment you and a random person from the street exchange cells. One at a time, your body gets one of their cells, their body gets one of your cells, at which point would they become you? So when it comes to psychedelics, when you take a high enough dose, what you'll often find in personal testimonies is phrases such as, realer than real, felt 100% real. It's a sense that once the hallucinations brought on by psychedelics, are so powerful that they can totally convince the brain that it is within a different reality to such an extreme that it feels more real than the reality we are currently living in. It's easier for our minds to imagine what point an object stops being an object and start debating about that, but at what point does one reality stop being the current reality and becomes another one. It's very clear to me that there's this huge uh, threshold within psychedelic dosing and the intensity of the experience that it doesn't feel 100% real, but there is some indistinguishable threshold when it becomes a totally convincing. So I think it has something very rich to add to the question of the mind-body problem of whether um, mind is fundamental to reality or is it uh, material. I'm not saying that this proves the idealist standing point. Usually the only other place to get this sort of um, experience of having a, a more real reality than the one we're living in is possibly dreaming. There usually is some point where it is distinguishable that yes, this is a hallucination, I know I'm hallucinating, but when something crosses that threshold as seeming more real than what it was thought of as real, then it becomes really hard to convince somebody um, that it isn't part of the, the rest of the consensus of what is real. I'm not entirely sure where or how this fits into like political conversations or how this fits into like moral conversations. It seems to be just like an unsettling fact that people don't want to pay attention to that the reality of reality can be so heavily distorted and it's, it becomes really hard to tell if this life that we're living is a part of a greater lifespan or a greater being uh, than we can perceive with our limited senses. Perturbing the mind with uh, psychedelic substances is our best method of doing that right now. And I do believe that VR will get to a point where the virtual reality will just be known as 
another reality. But you know, we're not quite there yet. For now, we, can, we only just got tripping. And if you find that you are struggling with this implication as well as like if you're experiencing like existential angst or dread, I would recommend philosophers like Albert Camus and Jean-Paul Sartre um, to help um, kind of try to understand or think about this more um, in-depthly. Um, I find like the conversation uh, of existence itself is very limited to, you know, the common conversations you would find bumping into somebody in an elevator. A lot of cold weather recently, eh? Yeah, yeah, but I just, you know, is it, is it real though? Wait, what, what do you, what do you mean? I mean, how do we know it's real? There are psychedelic substances that can make um, a reality more real than this one, and it could be like a totally different weather system. Um, then. I think it's my floor. One could really get lost in these thoughts, but uh, we need you here, so keep grounded. I just mean, don't lose yourself to the experience and these implications, you know? Uh, you are loved. I love you. <laughs> don't get too existential now. I don't really have a point with this. I'm not sure if there really is a point to anything, so...